And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, hello to everyone. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. It is now Sunday morning, but it's Saturday night for me and Josh because the fights just ended and we are ready to talk about. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that Oh, no, no, no. It was that bad. Let's not sugarcoat it. Not- <laughs> thank God. I just want to say thank God for the polar bear. Oh. Sergey Spivak, I love you. You're now my favorite heavyweight of all time. Because you freaking ended that in the first round after watching um, decision after decision after decision. Oh, my God. You're my favorite heavyweight until I watch another heavyweight. <laughs> until it. you fight like those guys that did yeah. earlier. <laughs> yeah, it was it was painful. John, let's just start off right off the bat. Let's go ahead and just stir the pot as much as we possibly can. Let's, what no. would you rate this card on a 1 to um, 10? 10 being the best, 1 being the worst. 4. Wow, you went that high. Yeah, I went that, <laughs> went that Wow. That's because of that's because of Spivak's freaking arm bar yeah. in the first round, man. There was three finishes <sighs> for the entire card. Painful. Three. You okay, know, and most and two of those were early. We we often will say, hey, when a card's not good, and we see people in the comments going, This card sucks, it's so trash. Yeah. Pay-per-view next week, or you know, pay-per-view was last week. That's why this card sucks. We're always like, you know what? There's some good fights on this card. This is one of those cards that could be a sneaky good card. In this card, yeah. I was like, no, nah, there's not really any fights in here that could be sneaky lot. good. Maybe like one or two. So you had maybe one that was, you know, better than we thought. But to be honest, there's the ones that we thought maybe were going to be good, and those ones sucked. Yeah. I gave this card a two and a half. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, I gave it a two <laughs> and a half. I I, I'm, I must be a fucking easy No, you are. You are. You. Your wife told me you were kind of easy when you guys first met, too. Oh, but, dude, I was, I was a whore. What yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> so, but no, it... Still it, am. Look, and I gave it a two and a half. I would have given it a two had Spinach oh. not finished the fight. I would have given I'll it a you, two. Man, as we go down, look, there were a couple of good performances mm-hmm. by, by certain people, I thought. Yeah. But... Yeah. It was not the fight it should have been. There was people that should have been going after finishing fights that never finished the fight. And you look and you go, what are you doing? Yeah. Do you realize that you don't want this to go to a decision? But it did. And it was like just overall. And then there's all the weight misses and stuff. It's like a six-pound weight miss? Really? Six pounds, Josh? Yeah, you didn't even try. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know. I mean, I normally go to bed the night before, six pounds over. I wake up, you know, four pounds close. Then I yeah. cut the four pounds, you know, four and a half, whatever it is, you know, how you slept that night. But that's an easy cut. Yeah, it's that's normally an easy one. cut, you know. Yeah. But no, that six pounds, but hey, we've seen worse. What was the Von Hostlin Slovenoff guy or whatever that was? He missed it by 11 and a half pounds in Bellator. Oh, that was this. <laughs> Ruslan Von Stoffenoff. <laughs> Robin Rusmolman. Yeah, whatever. But Rusmolin. that guy Rusmolin. missed him by eleven pounds. Look at he's a and Robin is a hell of a fighter, hell of a kickboxer. Fantastic two yeah. two division champion in uh, glory. He's a fantastic fighter mm. and missed weight by eleven pounds. That's so weird, right? Just randomly, you've know you know how to make weight, obviously. Because well, been what was the so okay? Long. What was the most you've ever heard of someone missing? That guy, <laughs> him. That one eleven okay. pounds. I will tell you for Bellator. I was I was refing, but Bellator had a fight. It was supposed to be Ryan Couture, Randy's son. Mm-hmm. And his opponent came in 17 pounds overweight. <laughs> 17. I'm like, dude, that, that's that's a, oh, that's an entire different weight division. Did he fight? You're, 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 no. Oh, okay. Does the no, commission step in at that point? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I would assume that you can't fight. You shouldn't. I don't know. Like the day there, wins, the, you shouldn't be allowed to commissions. Fight the person well, above commissions your, when the you, next week you know comes. you got you got to look and say. I think uh, Ryan came in at like one fifty four point five, right? So he's a lightweight, <clears throat> and this guy is in the the welterweight division. Usually, commissions go, "No, you're in two different weight classes. We're not going to even go there." No, John, he didn't even make the welterweight. That well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Point. He's, he's right at he's right at the limit. He's right at the limit. Yeah, he's one pound he's, over. Yeah, he's, right. he's, yeah. he's actually a middleweight. Yeah, it's a middleweight. Two pounds. Yeah. See, it's like, yeah, they, they won't give that one up. But 17 pounds is the most I ever heard. 
Well, hey guys, before we get started, make sure you guys subscribe to our channel, The Weighing In Podcast. Look, we, we bring you guys some of the best news and some of the best uh, fight recaps right afterwards. So make sure you guys tune into us right after the fights. We try to drop it the next morning as early as possible. We are here right now. It's like 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night for John. We're, we're filming the show right now, so it gets to you guys first thing. Keto George is on the West Coast, so he makes sure that he's got an extra couple hours to work on it. Before uh, he goes to bed, he gets it done and out first thing in the morning for you guys to listen to it on a oh, Sunday. Oh, look at the Playboy. Playboy. That's right. Yeah, we can, look, you. I know we call him Keto George. I call him the Ginger Ninja, uh, you know, <laughs> but that or the Muslim Ginger, either one. I like Ginger Ninja, too. I call him my Ginger. <laughs> if it's a redheaded ninja, he's a Ginger. <laughs> He's All right, maybe was total bad dad joke. Uh, it was really bad. Like like the one joke that I sent you guys this week. This is the greatest one ever, right? The one with the kid. I like that one. But it see, was that's very not a dad, that's that's not a dad joke. That's that's a kid joke. It is and when but, they pull it off that way. Yeah. It's like it was right, son. You gotta go. He said, Why are chickens so funny? And then the mom goes, Why? He's like, Because <laughs> <laughs> it was so good, but his voice was obviously way better than mine. He goes, ba -ba 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 <laughs> I thought it was great. Absolutely amazing. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to us on this channel, though. We also have a Clips channel down below. Subscribe. Hit that subscribe button as well. Uh, what we're going to do for this show, because we understand the fights absolutely sucked rocks tonight. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the fights that we want, pretty much the main card, and then we're going to probably just go over some news because there's a lot of actual news that's just fun to talk about. So we're going to have some fun tonight. We'll try to get this thing out to about an hour. And then we're going to uh, film a separate clip for you guys that will hopefully drop maybe Monday or Tuesday uh, before we film Tuesday night for our Wednesday drop uh, for some fun, you know, another little small article that will be fun for you guys. But before we get started, yeah, I want you guys to remember that this show is brought to you by BetUS. I want to thank you guys so much for supporting us over there. 125% bonus when you guys use our link in the descriptions down below. Use our link for BetUS. 125% bonus three times on your first three deposits. Check them out. Make it as organic as possible. So George didn't have to put the commercial in. But look, man, we're having some fun. We had we had some good bets on this one as well. The, Just the, the, the bonus is we give yeah. them the winners. That's all we do. We do. We, we handpick these winners for you guys. This was kind of an easy night for us. Uh, to go buy it, you know. Um, oh. But look, uh, yeah, like I said, this show is brought to you by BetUS. And also Element. Element is the hydration drink. They come in powders. They also come in their sparkling, which you can buy in cans. Check it out. Look, it's a very stay salty type world out there. And we actually, you can tell by the politics that are going around right now, it's a very stay salty Ooh. world. But look, let's, uh, let's have some fun with this show tonight. No saltiness involved when it comes to us doing our show. But hey, stay salty with Element. Use the link down below. When you purchase, they will send you free, a free, actually, I don't even call it free, just bonus uh, product with bonus your product. purchases. They send you bonus product with your purchases for every purchase you have. Uh, through our link, they will send you a bonus package, whether it's sparkling, whether it's uh, mixed packages, whether it's a variety pack of things. They will send you whatever it is for their newest product. Check them out. Amazing product. If you guys drink liquid IV, stop drinking that. It has too much sugar in it. Buy Element. Amazing. Absolutely amazing product. I, I go buy it. My son loves it. He uses it between his uh, sessions today. His session today for lacrosse got canceled because it was too hot on the field. Whether you're an Olympic athlete, professional hockey player, MMA world champion, or just an active kid, Element helps anyone stay hydrated. Each stick pack delivers a meaningful dose of electrolytes free of sugar, artificial colors, or other dodgy ingredients. Get your free sample pack with any Element drink mix purchase through link in bio. Also try the new Element Sparkling, a bold 16 ounce can with sparkling electrolyte water. Roll, train, ride, or play, but stay hydrated and stay salty. They said, yeah, kids are not allowed to be out with a heat index of a certain temperature. And actually, because it was on turf, um, that they were like, hey, it's not safe for the kids to be out here. So they actually pulled it, canceled it. Uh, but yeah, 
So we got to get up tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. for lacrosse, 8 to 9.30, and then 9, and then I got to rush over to soccer at 9.30 to 11, first thing in the morning. Boy, I'm telling you, have they gone a long ways? Because I'm telling you, I, and I'm not kidding, this is the truth. When I was a kid. I would hope you didn't lie yeah. to me about it. <laughs> There's no well, reason when I When I was a kid, I played, I played uh, there, was, there was always Pop Warner, but it was called Junior All-American was the big one by where I lived. And, uh, you know, started playing that at 9. You know, and there was like 200 kids would go out for the team and they would cut them until mm -hmm. they got to 33, right? But, man, I'll tell you what. Not only did they not give a shit what the temperature was, they didn't give you water. No. Because, you know, that was like, oh, you you know, you, you need water, you know? And eventually they were like, all right, everyone, take a water break. Boom. Get back here. Boom. Yeah. You know, and that was one water break for the entire practice and you go, man, I'm dying. You know, and it was 115 degrees out on the damn field. But now we didn't have AstroTurf because that does get hotter. Well, it lets me know. But yeah, but back then the AstroTurf was on concrete. Now, yeah, well, yeah, that was it, it was that real thin, basically just oh, it was, it was, it was carpet. Of, it's not, it wasn't safe yeah, it was at carpet. all. Yeah, no, <clears throat> you know how many, you know how many athletes, but it was, I'll tell you what, of that? I will tell you this. I, I know you didn't ever play on that. I did on Astro, Man, Astro AstroTurf. That Astro I see, Absolutely, I did. I played soccer. Oh, did you? It. it was fucking horrible. Man, it horrible. made you feel so fast, though. It did. Yep. Until oh, you dude. <laughs> you felt fast on that son bitch. I had buddies, though, that blew out their Achilles and their oh, knees yeah. left and yeah. right. Rolled their I ankles blew out my and never Achilles. recovered. Yeah. It's, it was my Achilles horrible. Out. I'm surprised more NFL athletes didn't get hurt. I know a oh, lot of them God. did, but I'm surprised even more didn't get hurt playing on that trash. Yeah. It's horrible. <clears throat> I oh, like yeah. what they're doing now. I wish they'd get rid of the rubber because you can use sand. And actually now what they're using in a lot of places is a chopped up walnut shell. So they take walnuts and they chop it really? up. They, yeah, they, it's basically like they make it into Just almost a sand. Down. They grind it all the way down and they lay that down and they lay it over the sand. Someone's eating a, someone's eating a whole lot of damn walnuts. Yeah, walnuts are everywhere, man. <laughs> yeah, much <more> waste. <laughs> that shit, I used to have walnut trees in one of my houses in California. Man, that shit made a mess yeah. everywhere. Oh, yes, they do. I don't know. I would have just. And then they turn all black. Yeah, grind them all up and send them <laughs> off to, you know, some whatever turf place. Go use yeah. it. Um, what was I going to. I was going to say, yeah, I played on soccer on that shit. That shit was horrible. You couldn't yeah, slide tackle fast. on it. And you made you no, feel fast. Dude, it burned you so oh, bad. You would have so the bad. just burns going on your elbows and knees mm -hmm. and stuff. It was You bad. might as well just been on concrete. It was just disgusting. Yeah. You get yeah, up every bad. single time. Your knees were just tore up. Oh, elbows tore, were up. tore up. It was yep. disgusting. Uh, you know, it's funny. What were you saying about, oh, the water breaks? You guys, did you guys have just the one long PVC pipe with holes drilled in it and everyone would drink out of like one big long pipe with a hose? No, we didn't end? have anything that fancy. We had a fucking hose, dude. <laughs> no, we had a hose, but it was like one, it was attached to the, no, end no, of no. the PVC pipe. I, that, that's when they got fancy. Oh, okay. Well, I, mean, okay. I am a little we bit. We had a you. hose. That uh, was it. A hose. I am a little bit younger than you. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot they, they, they didn't care. It's funny because then when I was teaching Jiu Jitsu, I used to tell all the kids, and obviously I was joking. I was like, yeah, water's for the week. You guys don't need water. Water's for the week. Because my coaches used to tell me that shit. Oh, yeah. You're, absolutely. You know, and in California, California, unlike Texas, California, like they practice in the rain on the on the grass fields. And so their fields are yeah. now just mud and dirt, right? Like that's oh, yeah. what. So the but grass that's never, the fun time. That's the fun time for playing. When, when it was. Raining, when it was raining oh, on a grass field, dude, that was the greatest time ever because you knew you were coming home just, just mud from head to toe, just nasty. Yeah, it was great. It was great, but then you realize half of the season that you're there's no more grass. It's just mud. Oh, yeah, so now no. you're practicing in just like dust because yeah. it gets dry and summer hits. And right. You're practicing in yeah. dust. And, you know, and your, your coaches have you doing sprawls and, and burpees and like whatever it is, you know, up and down, up, down. We up just downs. call them, yeah, up downs. Up downs. You're yeah. doing up downs and just dust in your face, sweat getting in your eyes and then mud and dust in your eyes, you know, and you're like, give me water to wash my eyes out. And they're like, no, you're water for the week. And that wasn't until those two, those, uh, those wrestlers and another college, a couple college players died from yep. heat exhaustion playing football. And the wrestlers got stuck in the sauna, and then they two. Yep. I think one Cutting of them weight. died. One or two of them died at the two University died. of Michigan. I want to say two. Yeah, I think two, and then one had one had some serious. I don't. Know, I don't know if they were both. I don't know if they were both from the University of Michigan, but they were. Yeah, there was three of them in the two University rest, of Michigan. Two wrestlers died. Yeah, two, and then I think that one. One was uh, in the hospital for a while. I think he got into a coma for a bit, and then he he was able to to make, make it. it through it. Yeah. 
Yeah, just weird times, man. Back then, that's when they had that's that's when they made real men. They don't make them anymore. Oh yeah, that's, that's when that's when they made real men because everyone was so stupid. Yeah, we just believed we had our no coaches idea. thinking they knew what they were doing. Yeah, they didn't yeah, know they shit. Had no idea. They didn't yeah. know shit. They were clueless. Yeah, but hey, you know what? It was good times. We learned the hard way. You know? Dude, I'll tell you. Oh, here, I'll, I'm going to give you. Think of how this would go over today, because my main coach, you know, when I playing junior all American, was a guy. That, his name was Herman Hicks. One of the biggest black men I had ever seen in my life, man. And I, you haven't I met mean, Bobby I Lashley. Have you? Oh no, no, no. The, you know, <laughs> when you're when you're nine years old and oh, you're yeah. looking up at a 270 pound mm-hmm. guy, right, and you're going, "That's the biggest man I've ever seen," right? Yeah. But he used to grab you because he wore glasses and he had this this uh, goatee, man. The handlebars. And he gra- handlebars no, or the goatee? No, no. He just had had the goatee, but it was you know really mad. It just looked good, and he would grab you by the face mask. And said, son, I'm going to kick your ass till your nose bleeds, right? <laughs> and I was like, I used to love that. I used to love the yeah. whole thing. I thought it was great, right? Yeah. I, I was like, I don't think that would go over No. <laughs> no. I, I, I don't understand why we are, we've gotten so soft with the coaches and just allowing them to, to do it. So, I don't know. It's all good. It would be nice if they... Uh, if they just let the coaches be coached. Look, I understand there's overboard. So, but you know, you know where you find oh, yeah. that mainly is you find that mainly in college. The coaches know that the kids are there on scholarship. They can yank a scholarship anytime they want. So they treat them like shit. You know? Yeah, a little different now with portals. This is very true. Very true. But, you know, yeah. up until recently, that was. Oh, yeah. Around. Yeah, no, so there was coaches. I mean, look at the yeah. Bobby Knight. Bobby Knight was a wild oh, man. Oh, my God. He was a wild was man. Did you, you know? ever see a movie called One on One? No. Robbie Benson was the star of it, <clears throat> and it was about basketball. Okay, and it was about a, a young kid that was just this phenom in high school and going to this, the big college, and he's got the big college coach, and the big college coach all of a sudden decides, "I don't like you," mm-hmm. You're, and tries to get rid of him. And uh, man, I, I loved that movie when I was young. I thought it was great, and then. Robbie Benson was actually the guy when I did Friends with Buffer and Tank Abbott mm-hmm. and them. He was the guy that directed it. Okay. So. You know, that that happens. That From what I've heard, that's happened a lot. I had some problems with, with one of my wrestling coaches in college. Same thing. He didn't like that I was fighting in the summers. And I was like, I'm not, oh, we're yeah. not under scholarship right now. Like we're not. Under, no, if you don't do what they say, you got any, problems. Yeah. It's like you do anything that you don't do anything that they want you to do. They, if they tell you not to do it, you better not do it. Oh, Otherwise yeah. they're, they're threatening your scholarship. They're threatening your book money. They're threatening your tuition. They're threatening whatever it is that they're giving you. It could be just books, you know, and <laughs> they don't, they're like, Hey, that's still $600. And I'm like, that's a lot of money to my broke ass. So, oh yeah, yeah, they were rough, man. They were rough. That all, like you said, all that's kind of I think gone away now under the portal. Yeah, you know, but a little uh, bit different. And also too different. with the uh, NIL deals, kids are making more money, even oh, if it's yeah. just you know a thousand bucks. Hey, hey. you can get money from donors. You can get money from people that like, they're going to pay for your books. They're going to pay for your you know a portion of your your food for the week. Hey. Hey, you're gonna you're gonna do whatever it is. Try, you, know, they, you have a little bit more say too. You can transfer to another school that has more money. Yeah. SMU, man, they are. I didn't realize how fucking how good they are at raising money. Are you kidding me? They are insane. Do you not remember? I do remember that the whole but SMU thought, with I Eric thought all Dickerson. That went, I thought all that went away after and James after Craig. That. Oh my god. Yeah, SMU was like the money train, man. They were paying yeah. everybody. They're, They're coming back. Just, They're coming oh, back. They, they just, got they got they got booted down, and they actually took away their yeah. team. No, they they basically just killed. They went into fucking the abyss. They sent them in the abyss and oh, said, yeah. "You guys are never coming back." Oh, and yeah. now look at how things have changed. I mean, they just signed that deal. I think for the SAC SEC, they basically said like, "Hey, you don't need to you don't need to pay us to be in the SEC for like the first seven or nine years." Cause we'll just get our own money. And sure enough, within like a week, they raised $200 million. I was like, Holy shit. That's how much their, their, um, Southern their, Methodist, yeah, their money. They're, they, I feel like they're just all cap raisers. Just let me just raise more money. <laughs> That's all I need is a cap raise. <laughs> Jeez, man. Uh, but Hey, I want to thank you guys for so much continuing. Like we support us, but let's jump right in this UFC main event. I know we chatted let's a little go. bit, but like I said, we're going to stretch this as much as we can and have some fun with it. we got some news articles to talk about too, for some fun, but, 
Yeah, let's go. Uh, Marcin Tarbura versus Sergei Spivak. Well, it was, you know, this was a rematch. It happened a long time ago. And, uh, you know, Marcin Tiburo was actually the ranked fighter, but Spivak was the uh, favorite in the fight. And obviously the odds makers were right because he came out, he looked sharp. He, he's got fast hands. For a big guy, mm -hmm. he does. He's got fast hands, and he can put shots on you right away. But he went for the takedown. When, he's, when he was in that position, he tried for the back. You're going, don't do that. That's a, you're, you've already lost it. And it's like, you know, it's one of those... You know, you can feel you. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. But it did not matter because he he pulled out his inner Fabricio Verdum, <laughs> okay, and hit the arm bar uh, and got a verbal tap. It was beautifully done. And look, big guys are not flexible. Okay, big guys are not flexible in their legs. Big guys are definitely not flexible in their arms and their elbows. You can you you can watch. You know, a lot of lighter guys, and especially the women, they look like they're almost made out of rubber. How much? You know, and it, it's hurting the whole time. Big guys don't go with the hurt. No. They go, oh, no, 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 no. I'm out, right? I have no flexibility there. I'm not going to let him rip my arm off. And the, the amount of strength that he has, he can do that. So a beautiful win for Sergei Spivak. I was impressed with the way he finished it. And thank God that he came up with a nice, First round finish after a plethora of decisions to the by the judges. John just dropped to his knees right there on the spot. Said, "Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Go, geez, there I is did. a Lord. Thank you. I did. Thank you. I just the Holy Ghost. Went, thank you. Thank you. I, up there. I appreciate that. I needed that. <laughs> uh, Survey Smithick, uh, man. Look, he's he. I look at him as a like a a hybrid heavyweight. He's two forty, kind of slender. You know, he's got some. Yeah, he's he got a little bit of power in his hands. He's mobile. All those things." He's going to struggle to be a top a top heavyweight because he is undersized, but he doesn't he doesn't fight like a very fast pace aggressive style fighter. Now he did tonight against uh, Marcin Tabora, but look, everyone yeah. looks fast against Marcin Tabora. Let's not let's not be mistaken. Uh, but you use that that uh, comparison very loosely against Verdum, <laughs> like basically saying Verdum esque in the arm. Oh man, he pulled out his inner Verdum. I any, loved it. Anytime a heavyweight hits any type of submission off their back, I'm just going to automatically go right to comparing him to Verdum because there's I've net I've yet to see. Uh, heavyweights move like Verdum from the bottom, you know, you have Nogueira a little bit, but the only one close Nogueira, Nogueira and Mir. Yeah. Yeah. Mir for sure. Frank Mir was pretty, yeah. very damn good off the back. Yeah. He Frank actually very, moved, moved, moved very well. Yeah. Created great angles. So, yeah. Yep. Uh, but overall, I mean, look, good transition, great submission, great finish. And, uh, it, it wasn't a tap actually. It was just a scream. Uh, verbal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we was, talked, we talked about this what just last week yeah just last week yeah if you right, belch out or yell out that is your you tap you scream out in pain it is a tap what Done. like you know it's fine did anyone ever try to like scream out and yell ah and then like and then when you stopped you're like i was saying like yeah go ahead and do yeah. it yeah i'm out <laughs> like did anyone ever try to get away with like no, no i was telling you, you well, got it no you know who tried to kind of do that <laughs> jail Joe warren oh joe, joe warren who is very who is just a smaller version of I'm jail Sutton, Sutton. right <laughs> joe joe warren was fighting uh marcus galvao mm. and he gets put into a, a knee bar this is a this is a world title fight for bellator he gets put into a knee bar and he's like ah, ah, struggling right and i'm not stopping he goes ah! and I, I stop it and he goes i didn't i didn't tap and i go yes you did no, what did yeah. i tell you in the back i told you you scream out in pain it's the same as a tap it's over and he goes but i was just telling me he couldn't get it <laughs> That's great. That's what I wonder. I always wonder if fighters like, are like, yo, I was just yelling yeah. out, like, nah, you ain't got nothing. Nah, yeah, you yeah. ain't got nothing. Yeah, yeah. that's it reminds me of something like Chael would do. He he didn't For have sure. nothing. He he didn't have his world title anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. But All Joe, right. I, I, I want to say this. Joe Horn was one of the greatest guys ever. He's a little he little bit off the rocker. Dude, he's funny yeah. as hell. He has absolutely got his shtick just mm -hmm. like Chael. But he's a good fucking guy. Yeah. Good guy. Damon Jackson versus Chepe Mariscal. Holy shit, Jeez. you talk about a beatdown. No, I would say I was I was I was kind of, I was like it was like after the 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 string of fights that had gone by that I watched people that I go, what 
why are you fighting that way? Yeah. At least Jeppe Mariscal went out and did what he yeah. does. He went out and he freaking, you know what? Took people down, beat the hell out of him. He beat the hell out of Damon Jackson that fight. He should have finished. Mm-hmm. He, that's my one complaint is, hey, you had a chance. You had him in such trouble in the end of the third round. All it takes is for you to go for it. And the referee wants to stop it. He wants to stop it. He wants to get Damon Jackson out of there. And what did Chepe Mariscal do? He stopped. Yeah. He just stops there. I'll, I'll stop hitting you. Okay. That's nice that you're being nice. But, you know, it, obviously it was, you know, on two scorecards, 10 8 for two rounds. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, he looked good. Damon Jackson just looked for the most part, just out of sorts. He, he he put himself in bad positions. He tried to work his way out. He was grabbing legs at times. You go, why are you grabbing the leg? There's nothing there for you. All you're doing is holding him onto your back. What are you doing? But, you know, he was in trouble and he was getting hit so much. You know, it comes a point you're just not fighting smart anymore. And that, that was what happened in that fight. Yeah, what happened in that fight was Chepe is a lot bigger, a lot stronger. Was well, he didn't make man- weight. Yeah, but he was just manhandling him, John. Oh, yeah. Just manhandling him. He, I know he cuts a lot of weight, but he didn't even cut all of it. And that's it. But I'm saying he just physically was just throwing him around, like oh, yeah. hip tossing him, head and arm in him. Like he was just throwing him around. And if you're Damon Jackson, you're thinking to yourself, man, this is horrible. This is why fighters, when, when, when people at home are going, oh man, he only missed the weight by five pounds. You could fight him anyways. Like he's going to put, you're going to put the weight back on too. Yeah. But I also depleted myself and killed myself to get there. Unlike that douchebag. Unlike the, unlike he didn't, yeah. he didn't and, have to put himself and you have to through do the, it. And now so he comes back, he's feeling fresh. If yep. that wasn't a thing where the guy that cut a lot of weight, if it wasn't a thing where the guy that cut a lot of weight, like, all of a sudden would feel better the next day. Like think about all the guys that, you know, cut a ton of weight and then they start fading halfway through the second round. You know, Gleason Tebow was famous for it. He was a oh, yeah. beast rounds one and a half. And then at one and a half. Because he it, cuts so much yeah. weight. That guy, I watched that guy get walked to the scale with his coaches holding his hand and holding him up. Walking yeah. him to the to the venue to actually make the weight. And then walking him into the hotel. And then walking him up the escalator. Like literally like he would lean on them. I was like, oh. damn. You guys are, this is insane. And that, that was only because that was before the whole, uh, IV bag thing when you could yeah. still do IV bags. And then when the IV bag thing went away, um, he still, they still tried to make the weights, still kind of made the weights and stuff like that. But then you can see his performances just weren't the same anymore, but still, I would never want to deplete myself like that ever. I mean, you look at Kevin Lee, Kevin Lee would crush himself to get down to 55. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking, man, he'd always fall apart after around one and a half. Cause when you're cutting that much weight and you actually make the weight, you've crushed your body so much that it's just, it's not enough time. And now no. they're giving you that amount of time to recover the 36 hours or whatever it is. And you see the difference. I'm going to use my teammate, Islam Makachev, as, a, as, a, as an example. His fight with Volkanovsky the first time and his fight with Volkanovsky the second time. Look exactly at the difference it. in an extra 15 well, hours. Here, here's what you do. And I'm not even talking about the results of the fight. Look at the difference yeah. in his body. Yeah. If you take a picture of him from the first time they fought, and you put that picture next to when he fought him the second time, and you'll see what an additional 15 to 17 hours does. There's there's the evidence of it. Yep. Very true. His first fight, he looked, and you and I were texting each other as he oh, walked. Yeah. I'm like, he looks Strong. flat. Like, his body yeah, looks smooth. Strong. He doesn't look like he trained at all. And I know he trained. I know oh, he yeah. trained, but then he just didn't look. He looked smooth. And uh, either he was overtrained or just the hydration, just, he wasn't able to hydrate properly. And it showed. I think he wasn't able to hydrate properly. Then the second time, looky, looky what we have. He looked phenomenal. Because he was able, he had that extra 15 hours or whatever, you know, or 10 hours, or whatever it was. So, dude, so half a day, man. Huge that's a difference. lot. Huge difference. You know how many times I got on the scale and I got off? And I'd cut so much weight. And, it was, and I didn't cut a lot of weight. I cut from 72 to 74 pounds, from 172, 174, down to 155. But I'd get off, and all of a sudden, my body would go in shock, and I'd get, like, shivers. I had to go back to the hotel and lay in the blankets, and then I'd turn the heat, I'd turn the, uh, heat up, and I would just drink and hydrate and try to get some food in me. My body was just shivering and shaking for, like, a couple hours until yeah. I finally got enough food in me and finally got enough water in me, and then I was able to, like, be normal. I mean, I was never normal, so we all knew that. 
But uh, overall, Damon Jackson, I mean, it's a shitty situation because now you just you allowed this guy, you allowed yourself to fight someone. You should have probably pulled out of the fight. No, you missed the you. You're already a bigger guy. You missed the weight by six pounds. Like I'm, I'm dealing with this, you know, already. And then now, I know with a performance like that, I got ten, eight, two rounds. I may yep. get cut. Yeah. And I mean, I don't think the UFC I, should cut people off. They're, they're like not going to cut. But them. that's not my that, but, that's the shitty yeah. situation to be in. I mean, he has some cuts all over his head. Speaking of cuts, which is after after all that transplant stuff, you don't want any put <laughs> big old dents in your head, man. That's right. That's <laughs> right. For, uh, for a second there, I forgot about that. Uh, Danny Barlow versus uh, Nikolai. Uh, how do you say his name? Vertenikov. 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 Go ahead. Uh, you know. <laughs> The scores on this one was a little bit weird as far as there was two 29-28s, which I agree with, and there was one at 30-27 that I don't agree with. But I thought the first round was pretty clear that Danny Barlow landed the clear, cleaner shots. I thought the second one was it was more of a volume, and it was his jab. While Vertenikov was looking for big shots, he was missing a lot of his shots. Mm -hmm. He was throwing hard, but he was missing a lot. And so... You can't score what doesn't hit, or if it's hitting off his shoulder or his arm, doesn't matter. You know, you throw the kick and it goes off his arm. Well, it's great. It's a blocked kick. So I thought the second went to Danny Barlow, and I thought the third definitely went to Vertenikov. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought he, you know, in that one, he was landing good shots, and I thought Barlow got tired. He was tired. You could see the difference in him, and uh, but still hung in there tough, and he deserved the win. But uh, it was it was one of those fights I actually expected more out of. This was one of the fights that I was actually looking forward to. This was one that I thought, you know what? When I figured out who Vertenikov was and I, I knew where he trained and stuff, mm -hmm. and, uh, I said, you know what? He's a solid fighter. He's good. And Barlow, I, I know, is he's an athlete. He's an athlete. He's fast. He's good. So I thought this was going to be one of the better fights. It was okay, but it mm -hmm. didn't live up to what I expected it to be. Look, I don't normally agree with Michael Bisming, you know, um, but I got to be honest. Michael Bisming brought up a very good point because you know how many times I've done it myself, and I know he's done it himself too. He talked about it. But even Paul Felder is that he's going to go home. Barlow and Vera Tenikoff are going to go home and watch the tape and go, damn, I could have yeah, done damn. so much more. Oh, yeah. I could have done this. And Barlow may not as much because so they, oh, I still won. Yeah, but then you look like shit in the third and you lost the third. Like you definitely lost the third. To me, I, I don't know what it was. I always just wrote the first round off. I just knew, like, I wasn't going to be the stronger. I wasn't going to be the, the harder hitter. Like, the guys didn't have to really fear me for much, you know? But I had to put a tempo and a pace on it. In this fight, they like, he gave up the third round. I always was like a fighter going, like, okay, as long as I don't lose the third, right? You got to fight hard, you know? Like, get this thing, push them, break them. That was all my whole mentality. I know not every fighter is that way because I'm, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a lightweight. I'm a skinny, scrawny little kid. That kind of thing. Like I never had anything out. Like this guy Barlow's got power in his left hand. Very ten o'clock. Kicks fast. are good. But man, you got none of this stuff works if you don't actually throw. You can't win fights if you don't throw. If this was a a, a mediocre at best sparring session. Well, and that, that was the one thing with Vertenikov that I kept looking at. It's like, what are you doing? Because he would land. And we talk about throwing, mm -hmm. you know, hey, throwing in combinations. You, you got to throw that three, four. No, he no. would throw one and back out. And you go, why are you backing out? You just gained that ground on someone who's fast and you got inside where you needed to be and you threw one shot and you backed yourself out. Yeah. I mean, Bisbee and Felder both said the same thing. Like, they're going to go back and watch it, but they're going to be like, man, I could have, every time I threw, I landed. All I had to do is just throw more. And yeah. they're, they're going to watch it back going, look, oh, I landed a three punch. Oh, I landed this. I landed that. They're going to kick themselves. Both of them are going to kick themselves. Maybe not so much Barlow because he won the fight. But if, if I'm Barlow, I'm like, I should have won the third round too. I just yeah. didn't do anything. You know, I let Veritanikov come back in the fight. If this was a five-round fight, which I don't see the two of these guys fighting in five-round fights for a while, is, um, you know, it just it comes down to that. They got to get busier. Yeah. They got to get busier yeah. if they want to win fights. You True. can't ink them out. These, when people talk about, oh, Dagestani privilege or Dana White privilege, whatever it is, but yeah. you don't have to worry about those guys slowing down. They'll fight until they drop. These are the type of fights that drive Dana White crazy. You yeah. guys didn't fight hard. You guys, this was a, like a mediocre no, no. sparring session at best. And it, and it's not only that. It's like by the third, mm -hmm. you were exhausted. 
Why are you exhausted? You didn't take that much damage. Yeah. Why are you? If you take a look at if you're Damon Jackson, I yeah. understand why you're exhausted at the end of that third round. Mm. You have taken a shit ton of damage. But if you're Danny Barlow, you didn't get touched much in that fight. Yeah. Crazy. You no. Know? So I agree. Chris, Chris Gutierrez. Here's another one. Chris, you know, I like Chris Gutierrez. Set the he's number two as far as landed kicks in the UFC, and no one gives a shit when you have a young kid named Kwong Lee coming in and taking you down, and you barely eked out a win. Mm -hmm. You barely eked out the win, man. You're lucky you got that win because it was just a little bit of, you know, a little more savvy and just a little bit more confidence by Mr. Lee. He could have ended up winning that fight. Now, the Gutierrez did a great job of continuing with the leg kicks, and eventually by the third round, you could see that Lee's leg was dead. Mm -hmm. It was torn up and stuff. But, you know, to, to be a guy that's debuting in the UFC and Chris Gutierrez, you look at your performance, he took a round from you too. You know, you should have been putting it on him. You should have been putting it on him to the point where you ended up breaking him down and you put him away in the fight. Yeah. And it went to a decision. Yeah, when you're when you're landing kicks like that and the guy has no defense for it, you just gotta keep going to the well. And it was like you were taking forever, you weren't really putting the output. I don't know. It just was another one of the fights you're like, eh, I expected more. Sparring session. Yeah, for, sparring for Chris session. Gutierrez, it kinda looked like a sparring session. Yeah. Uh, I thought you know, I thought you know, look at Kwong Lee's a guy you're looking at and you're saying he's more of a stand up fighter. He's wrestling. Why? Because he's winning in the rent with with wrestling, he's beating you. He threw him around for a second. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> John, you and I were texting back and forth. I was like, hey, Santos is, she's got some movement. She got some, she's, <laughs> John, she's a looker, man. I'm sorry. Put a sky of. Yes. Yeah, look at, I just want to say, Thiago, you, you definitely yeah. hit up, bud. You hit up above your pay grade. God bless you, man. You deserve it because your your wife is hot. Yeah, don't <laughs> she, beat me up. She, don't beat me yeah, up. Don't beat me up. Yeah. She's got good movement. She throws great, clean, crisp combinations. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm looking at a she, little too much movement in this one. Yeah, she's got to have more output, a little bit more output. She throws aggressively, though, and hard when she does throw. Yeah. So it makes it fun to watch. I was actually intrigued by the fight, you know, for the first round and a half, and then I kind of started losing interest because then it became a sparring match. Well, no. Chelsea Chandler came in six pounds overweight. Yeah. You look and you go, I didn't know that. You, can't, you can't do that. Hmm. You know, Yana took the fight. You know, God bless her for taking it and stuff, but six pounds overweight. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's, that's nuts. All right, next fight. Well, we had, this one was actually, uh, this was a good fight. This one I enjoyed. This was uh, Kazama against Gregorio, Gregorio and uh both of these guys were fighting hard. Uh, I can't even say his name. Char Charpanlamus? What is it? I, I don't know. Charla Gregorio. Charlampos. I just Charlampos Gregorio. Gregorio. Yeah. He, man, he was, he was aggressive. He was going after him. He had him in trouble. But he also sat there based mm. upon being tired. Why a guy throws a freaking triangle up. Mm. His arm is underneath his body, Josh. Yep. It's a good defense. Didn't throw. Didn't like drive his shoulder forward. No. Nothing. I mean, just, what did he do? He just brought his arm across for him, he and then brought tapped. his arm up <laughs> and allowed him to grab it and pull it across, and and tapped out. He's just tired. Like, Fuck, he's just tired. Keto George, show him the fucking triangle defense for me, please, yeah. son. Show him the triangle <laughs> defense, man. I was. He had just dropped Kasama, I believe. Right, Kasama yeah. just got dropped. I was like, yeah. man, what what are you doing? Like, you literally just blew your wad, right? Yeah. And now you didn't know what to do. Like that's that's the dangers of the younger fighters, right? They just they have yeah. success for a split second. They get all like amped up. The adrenaline dump happens. That choke wasn't even fully on, and he was like, "Oh, it's getting a little tight in here." I'm just tired, okay, dude. No, gotta, just first off, when you are in a deficit of air, anyways, yeah, and then just a little squeeze, yeah, it goes a long way. Pull a little Mike Van Arsdale. Let me put this arm across uh, for you. <laughs> Put the arm across for you. I'm going to just tap right now. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, man. Take Jeez. it on poor Mike. All right. Any other fights on this card, John, you want to talk about? Who do you want to give love to? You know what? I got I talked about Carl Williams mm. uh, and uh, 
Denise going at it. You know, Denise is a kickboxer. Carl Williams thought he was a kickboxer. Here's a guy that can wrestle that didn't take him down until he was almost knocked out. Hmm. You look and you go, what are you doing, man? Hmm. What? <laughs> this is life. Uh, sometimes you can't Denise make guys undefeated. have a good fight. Sometimes you, may, you can't have guys have a good fight IQ. That's true. And a lot of it, too, I blame. I don't just blame it on the fighters. I blame it on the coaches. You know, you got to have a better game plan. And if you don't have a good game plan after round one, you got to make adjustments. Yeah. And if your coaches are the ones that need to be make, helping you make those adjustments between rounds. Hey, you know yep. what? The striking's not working right now. Let's go ahead and start working the wrestling. Now, I'm not saying we got to commit to the wrestling. I'm saying we got to open up the wrestling to start opening up our hands. The two things will work together and we'll have some success. If that's not working, then we'll just go straight to wrestling. <laughs> that's, you know, but obviously there was no adjustments. So, well, I, you do have to give it up for, uh, uh yosef zalal, zalal. He, he was with uh, the ufc got booted and he came back and me he, he learned a lot from his time away and he's really looking good he put on a good performance so you got to give it up to him and he finished the fight which is what people are wanting to see he's only 27 years of age he's got a, a big career ahead of him if he just continues on the path that he is currently on because that was a very nice because he had his his last fight was against uh, Billy Q, mm -hmm. Billy Quarantillo, who's a just a, a, a fighter, ballsy, scrapper. tough fighter. And then uh, going against Aaron's here, another one. You look and you go, a nice second win in a row. Way to go. That's going to wrap up our UFC talk. But, John, let's talk about um, – let's go ahead and go with uh, Vera Tenikoff one more time. George, there's a nice little video of him getting lost on his way to the cage. It's not as if, like, you can't see the cage coming out of the locker room. And, you, like, you find your way there. Yeah. He tried taking shortcuts. He tried going through the crowd. And they were trying to, like, basically, like, like well, horse and cattle, trying to corral him back into the corral towards the damn the, cage. I mean, the UFC yeah. sets up these, what we call cattle rails. Yeah. I mean, it's not hard to follow. Uh, the, only, the only thing they can do better is put, you know, train tracks down there and have you rolled out. Uh, you know? It's like. I don't. I don't know how he got lost, but somehow he did. He found his. He found a way to get lost, which is funny because it's only about twenty five feet to the damn cage from the locker room. <laughs> it's not room. far from the back. <laughs> it's not. Uh, oh man! All right. Hey, I wanted to get your opinion on uh, some comments made by Dana White. It says he's talking about Tom Aspinall. He's working his way up. He's climbing up the ladder, and everyone's like, "He deserves this. He deserves that. He doesn't deserve anything." Okay. I think Dana's wrong because Dana, this is when Dana puts him in the position of, I'm going to give you an interim title shot. And he did that with Pavlovich against Aspinall. Mm -hmm. What does that mean when you win that? What does it mean? Well, in I mean, every other, in every other damn time that there's been the interim champion Okay, other than Tony Ferguson winning the interim championship and then Khabib being out and he fights Justin Gaethje, who ends up winning the interim championship. When you have that win as the interim champion, normally what's your next fight? The champion. Fighting the champ. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, you can sit there and say whatever you want. The champ is John Jones. But Dana is dead set on hooking up this fight between John Jones and Stipe for whatever reason it is that he's considering this special, you know. But it should be Tom Aspinall gets that shot at John Jones. He's the interim champ, and John Jones is the undisputed champ. It's supposed to be that that's who uh, gets the shot, not someone sitting on the outside like Stipe who hasn't had a win in a while. Did you see the Tom Aspinall comments about Stipe? He said no. Tom Aspinall calls for Stipe Miocic to be John or to be Joe Biden from the John Jones title <laughs> fight. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of rich coming from a guy from the UK. Yeah, well, I, you know, I don't think that uh, Stipe is uh, having any problems with his ability to be lucid. I think he can still talk. I think he can still move. I think he can climb a flight of stairs mm -hmm. without falling down. Yep, and. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about, you know, being at, you know, events where things don't look too good and he's running off stage. But searching you know, for a hand to shake. <laughs> Tom Aspinall has done everything that's been asked of him. Yeah. 
Okay, let's just be honest. He's won you know, fights he, impressively. Oh my god, we haven't seen heavyweights like that for a while. You know, it's funny when you think about it. You know, and Dana's sitting here and whatever. Dana's got his reason. Okay, I don't know it. You don't know it, but he's got his reason. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing, and he knows why he wants to do it that way. But you take a look and you go, who in the heavyweight division right now is more impressive? I mean, there's nobody mm -mm. as impressive as Tom Aspinall. Tom Aspinall is beating everyone, most of them in the first round. Most of them, it's all stoppages now. I mean, that's what you want. That's what you're looking for. That's what you you want to say. This this dude just annihilates everyone, and you've got him. But right now he's on the John Jones train, and that's why he's talking John up. And I don't blame him for talking John up. But his talk about John being the pound for pound, it's hard to be pound for pound when you're not fighting. Yeah, you know, if you want to say that John Jones is the greatest mixed martial arts fighter you've ever seen. I'm okay with that. Uh, that's not that's not a bold statement. That's no. not something where you're stepping way outside of. It is easy to say that John Jones is the best mixed martial artist that's ever stepped into a ringer cage. Okay, it's something that you could actually have you know good validation. But to sit there and say that he's the best right now, I'm not too sure about that. Age has a yeah. way of taking everything away from us. Yeah, I mean, he can make a run at heavyweight only because heavyweights are slower. They're not as athletic. Sure, you can get some good athletes in there, but John is just an, a superior athlete to any of the heavyweights that are there. Tom Aspinall is right there, but I'm like, yeah. if I talk actual real athleticism, John probably going to outrun him. John going to probably be able to, you know, out dunk him, out throw the football. He's going to be more of an overall well-rounded athlete. Tom Aspinall is probably going to be very good in one or two things. But not in terms of athleticism. It's gonna be John Jones in okay. the overall. But look, there was also a comment made. So someone said, like, fun fact. This was a dig at John, but John came back with a very slight, uh, like a very slick comment back. The the fan or whatever Noah Anderson 03 goes. Fun fact: John wasn't playing. He thought that was his wife. So I don't know what that meant. I didn't see what it was regards to. But then John replies back. Fun fact. After this, John jo after this year, John Jones will never have to work again. Retired at the age of 37. Winning. That's what he said. So okay. that, no, no, but I'm saying that being said, do you feel like all this like prop John Jones up by Dana White is to kind of entice John to stick around after the Steep A fight? Look, I'm going to go ahead. I told you I'm going to give you the Steep A fight. And all Dana does anytime the heavyweight division is brought up is he is slurping up John Jones. And I understand John Jones is the greatest combat sport in UFC history. Okay. And maybe in combat sports history, but he's, I feel like he's Dana has a way sometimes of saying how that guy's the greatest ever to try to like make, not just himself believe it. Cause that's how he was with Brock Lesnar saying how Brock was going to destroy Cain Velasquez. Oh and, dude. And how did that turn out? I'll never forget the conversation with that. I go, you think Brock's going to win? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was shocked. And so, but that's my thing is that I feel like Dana, this if when the boss is talking heavily, very uh, highly of you, that you'll see fighters sometimes. Oh, you know what? Maybe I still got it. Maybe I can be there. You know, and I could, I'll just do this. I'll fight one more fight for you because you've been you've been nice to me. We see it all the time. You know, fighters will do one more yeah. thing for Dana White because Dana White gave me a, a Mustang or Dana White said something nice about me on Twitter. We see it all the time. It's happened so many times. In this scenario, like John, I think plans on leaving after the Stipe fight. Me, I, I, there, there's got to be something agree. very enticing for him to come back to fight Tom Aspinall. He's done everything. I'll tell you what. You look at, when it comes to fighting, John's very intelligent, mm -hmm. and I think at this point, John is in that position where he still looks at himself as undefeated. Okay, which he's not. Yeah, he's undefeated as far as guys beating him. Yeah. The only guy that's ever beaten him is Steve Mazzagatti. We, okay. Well, he lost. He lost. That's it. That's all that matters. Yeah. There's the one on the He got record. disqualified, but it wasn't the fighter that beat him. It's the one on the record, so, John. It doesn't matter. It's still it's not the, the fighter the, that beat him. No fighter record, has John. beaten it's him. A loss. So you take a look and you go, <laughs> John, John is now in that position. <laughs> John is now in that position. He's kind of looking at it like, hey, 
why am I going to take this chance against this guy when this guy has got certain elements to him that have always presented problems to John Jones in yeah. fights? Yeah. John does well against guys that are small, shorter than him, compact guys like Cormier. John, with, with his with his length, he's able to do exactly what he wants. When it comes to someone that can match his size, he's always had a little bit of problems. Mm -hmm. you know, not that he hasn't gotten by him, but he's had problems. So this guy's not only younger, he's not only probably faster, maybe stronger. Mm, why yeah. am I going to even go there? Yeah, it's a little concerning. If I'm John Jones, I mean, I'm taking my Steve Miocic fight, who's considered to be the best heavyweight of all time, which I don't, I think he's right up there. I just think in the prime of Kane. Stop. Kane, the prime of Kane. Not Velasquez, even close. I think Kane would have beat him. There's the guy named saying. Fedor. I didn't, look, w w Fedor never fought in the UFC. Like John. No, he didn't fight. You can't so compare you, the two. Excuse me. What did you say? You can't compare the two. You said the best, he's considered the best heavyweight I of all time. I said he's con considered one of the best. You consider you said no. He's the best George, in the UFC. He's George, the best in the I UFC. want you to verify. Did he say that he's the best? He said one of the, the said, best heavyweights no, of all time. George, the best I said one of the time. best. He, you have you didn't say anything hearing. about in the in the UFC. Miss McCarthy was right about you. You do have selective hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. Look, Steve, I can't wait to get her on the podcast I one of these days. I, I do gonna, not ever want to put anything bad about Steve because no, he's, he's a, a great fantastic guy. fighter and a great Absolutely. guy. And he's he has nothing to prove mm -mm. to anyone. Uh, he's been outstanding for the sport. It's just that you know to even say that you know he he came back and he won his title back. I give him credit, man. That's awesome. You know that that's not an easy thing to do, and he did it uh, in the UFC. Yeah, he's definitely one of the best heavyweights that's ever been there for the UFC. But when you look at them prime for prime, I would give Cain Velasquez. Uh, uh, I would give him the nod over him. Over Stipe, yeah, I would too. Yeah, and I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be biased at all whatsoever. I'm not Kane being a homer. Had, Kane I'm had the attributes to to beat Stipe in his Kane, prime when he was. Kane was injured. freaky good. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I'm being honest when I say this. No one really got to see exactly how good Kane no. was. No. He had a couple of those fights where you look and you said, "Man, he he, he looked great in that one." But then he always had one that she looked and he was like, it's not there. Well, check Congo fight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that fight yeah. was just like, we. I was like, oh, shit. He got hurt. He got dropped three times in that fight and then came back. Oh, he got hurt. He got, he got hurt a lot. Twice in the first yeah. round, once in the beginning of the second. And then I think he finished the fight in the third, in the second or the third. I think he finished it. But either way, anyways, he just, he had, and then his uh, junior fights were just fucking phenomenal. The first one sucked. But the next First two were just sucked. phenomenal. But he was a, he was also injured. Yeah, he was. He was. He heard it the week before. <clears throat> I know. Hurt the he heard it the week before. Uh, he yeah. just was somebody that his career was lost inside the training room. Yeah, and there was nothing we but could see, do about it. And that's one of the things you know, Dana. You know, that's one of his complaints. You know, and it was he didn't complain well, when Habib won the title. He didn't complain when on, Islam stop, won the title. Stop! 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 It was, unfortunately, when Dana goes on the attack, he just attacked everyone mm -hmm. at AKA, and AKA was this bad place because you guys don't know how to train and you're hurting people and you can't get to the fights. And it was all frustration with, mm -hmm. you know, his heavyweight and Kane. He knew he had something special with Kane. After he demolished Brock. Yeah, he didn't realize <laughs> that until afterwards. Well, dude, that, you know, that was one of the funniest things ever is he, you know, because when... Uh, when it, he, he was like positive that Brock was going to win. And I was like, man, I don't see it. I don't know how Brock wins that fight. I go, what's he going to do? He goes, Brock was an NC2A champion. Kane was never an NC2A champion. I go, no, he was an All-American. Hmm. I go, which means that they were like this close. Yeah. You know, it's like, I said, and it's not wrestling. I go, Brock can't hold him down. I go, he's not going to be able to hold him down, and he doesn't want to be standing up with him. I said, he's in trouble. That's not a, that's, that's a bad fight for Brock. And he goes, you're crazy. <laughs> First round, I just look, I just kind of looked at him like, yep. When you go back and watch <laughs> the crazy. Shane Carlin fight, he had no cardio either. Like If he didn't get you out of there, he didn't have no cardio. And I know that Shane, it was even more tired than, than oh. Brock was. 
Brock did the Randy Couture after round one. He bounced around in the corner and saw, looked across, <laughs> saw that Shane Carr was so tired. Let me bounce oh, around. Let me show you yeah. that I'm not as tired as you. you. Exactly. That was a great mental strategy. He did a great oh, yeah. job in that scenario. But Dude, that was not totally, going to happen to Cain Velasquez. Ever. When you can, when you can break your opponent, not during the fight, but between the rounds, and that's when yeah. they go, "Oh shit, I'm in trouble." Yeah, it's like, well, that's Shane looked nice across job. the thing and was like, "Oh, oh he was done. Fuck, he's still." Shane, around. Shane was in what we call rabidosis at that moment. Yeah. His arms, his legs, everything, all the blood was just pumped out to every limb he had, and he had nothing for his lungs. <laughs> It was like just dead. Just a bad position to be. Just yeah, dead. just dead. Hey, there's. I'm gonna go over this one too. Um, <clears throat> says Javier Mendez talks about Islam Makachev and says, "Hey, um, maybe Islam gains weight and goes to 185. I mean, he'd have to gain weight, obviously, because that's a little big for him. You never know. He's that good. He's pound for pound number one for a reason." Drickus comes out and says he's dreaming real big. I'm very big. I'm completely, uh, I completely understand going up to another division and fighting for another belt because there comes a stage where it makes sense. I'm not the one who's going to say no. So they, you know, there was a little bit of that, uh, that conversation. Then I think Drick has said, yeah. said something else too, um, along the lines later on. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. It says, <clears throat> it says, I would never fight Islam a hundred percent, but honestly, yeah, I said I would never fight Islam 100%, but honestly, he could go up to 185 and beat Drickus Triplessis right now. That's what Bilal Muhammad says. Man, Bilal's everywhere oh, okay. right now. Just He's just crushing dudes. Now, obviously, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, that's my boy kind of training with him, you know, that kind of thing from Bilal. And I see yeah. the same thing as well. You know, but Drickus is tough, man. But let me see. There's another comment from Drickus here. Drickus Triplessis warns Islam Makachev against middleweight move. He's dreaming real big. I'm very big. He can't fight. Like, yeah, he won't be able to fight me. What's your take yeah. on that? Well, I think the whole thing is, you know, all of a sudden, it's because I think Islam did want to move to 170. He did. That's that's something we talked to him about. Yeah. And, you know, now that Bilal is in that position, it kind of puts a little bit of a dampener on mm -hmm. him because Bilal has gone and trained with Islam and, Habib and he's kind of part of the group and you know he's not going to fight somebody that you know is like a training partner to him so now we're skipping 170 to say we're going to go up to 185 it would take you know you figure Islam probably walks around at 185 190 yeah he's he about 192 to, somewhere in there okay 192. all right so you, he's right at that you know Duplessis probably walks around at 220, 215 to 220. Yeah, probably that 215, yeah, somewhere yeah. in there. Five pounds is a lot, but yeah, 215. Yeah, somewhere in there. But you take a look and you go, how much time would it take for Islam not to just put the weight on, but to put quality weight on that yeah. is not weight that his heart cannot handle that extra weight in the cage? Because you've got to pump blood to that extra muscle because you know we don't want him to put fat on which is not going to be any good anyways but we, okay he's going to put extra muscle on well now he's got to be able to get his heart able to pump the blood to that extra what's going to end up being 30 pounds 30 pounds of extra muscle that's going to take a long time for him to be able to, to get to that weight so you know i think that uh right now islam should stay at lightweight Islam should wait until either Bilal is uh, no longer the champion and then go after the 170. That's great. But to go to 185, it's a huge leap. All right, I'm going to be a complete homer right now. You guys can take go it ahead. for you what it that. is. <clears throat> do I think it's a super tough fight for him? Absolutely. Do I think he can do it? Absolutely. I think the way to beat Drickus will be how people talked about BJ Penn not beating Matt Hughes the very first time. And the way that happened was everyone thought that Matt Hughes was going to take him down, smother him, be stronger than him, dominate him on the ground, all these things, control him. <clears throat> and I knew the insides and the outsides of, of how BJ's takedown defense was. <clears throat> You'd seen sure. BJ, his takedown defense, phenomenal. Fucking unbelievable. He's like a goddamn fucking Spider-Man. Yeah, he would just hop around on one foot and make you tired. And then his dexterity, <laughs> when you did sit him to his hip, he just popped back up. He'd right drag you by and take your back and then choke you out. And so 
that's how, you know, when people were talking about him fighting Matt Hughes, I was like, yeah, I'm a little nervous. <clears throat> Only because I thought as BJ got, got going that he would fade. But that fight didn't well, go very long. He probably would have. That's what happened. Look, let's be honest. <clears throat> that mm -hmm. didn't happen the first time they fought. And it did happen yeah. the second time they fought. Mm -hmm. so but when I look was, at... That, that was a righteous fear. But when I look at Drickus, right? <clears throat> He's a good fighter. He's got power in his hands. He's not a great wrestler. He just kind of no. moles guys, no. like mauls He's them. He's strong. And, yeah. He's strong. strong throws Physically them down. strong. <clears throat> Islam is... His grappling, he's a technician. He's a technician, and like when I yeah. say like, oh, like he's he. I've seen him handle world class black belts. I've seen him do things to Luke Rockhold that I'm like, geez, man, like this guy's Luke is very good on the ground, getting better now. I mean, he got away from it for a while because he fell in love with his stand up and his kicks. But his grappling is phenomenal. His grappling <clears> has always get, been yeah. Really it's good. been he's getting a lot better. He's getting better now as we speak because he's getting ready for this CJI thing. Going on I don't Vegas. know. I watched him against Kamzai. Shut man. your mouth. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Shut they showed the no, highlight. I, lo I love how when you you watch something, you look and you go, okay, that's that's a wrestling part of your position. You're acting like, oh, you know, he's trying to scramble. Get it. It's like, what are you doing? Man? Yeah. You're, you're, trying to, you're trying to force, you know, the story? Okay, I see what you're doing. Yeah, they're trying but to. Okay. Uh, so, but, you know, right. like, I've seen Islam go through top-level world-class black belts, handle them on the ground. I mean, like, I've had guys that were world-class brown belts and, bla and black belts come into the gym, train with them, and go, he is hands down the strongest guy I've ever grappled with. He's hands down like a guy that I never would have thought in no gi grappling with him, that I I've thought I'd be able to work him over, tap him, this and that. He's a wrestler. He doesn't know this. No, he's very good off of his back, and he's good on top with good pressure. Drickus to me is he will maul you, he will he will swarm you, he will overwhelm you. I think he may be able to do that to Islam, but I believe there's going to be transition periods where <clears throat> Drickus does take him down, or Drickus does try to keep it on the feet, and Islam's able to get him in some sort of transition, and he will catch his neck. He will catch him either in a guillotine. He'll catch him and get to his back. He could even catch him in some sort of transit. Now, where Islam always works to with guys at 155 pounds, where does he go? Side chokes, which I think he can get Drickus in, is a side choke. Kimuras, no, too strong. I think Drickus will probably muscle out, power out, those type of things. Arm bars, I don't even think that he would go for it because he knows that Drickus will probably be too difficult to arm bar. He will potentially go for a triangle out of the arm bar transition. And I also think if he gets to his back, I think he finishes it from the back. He's able to finish him from the back or he's able to catch him in some sort of guillotine. But here's the question. Is it going to even be Drickus that has the belt? That's true. Because it could be it this could guy be named easy. Izzy. And that to me is yeah. an easier fight. And Izzy right now is the favorite in that fight. That's weird to me. Isn't that crazy? That's weird to me. Izzy yeah, is the because favorite. one person has been extremely is active. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Look, I'm looking forward to that fight, though. I'm looking forward to oh, it. Oh, yeah. Is he been oh, working no, a lot on his wrestling from what I understand? And the, the time off, even though he wasn't training as much, most of the majority of the time when he was training was focusing on his grappling, his wrestling and his grappling, so his wall escape, apparently. So we're going to find out. I'm looking forward to that fight. But do I think Islam can can stay with Drickus? He's got to put the weight on properly. But like I said, the ways that he beats Drickus is by transitions. He beats him in the transitions and the scrambles, whether it's on the guillotine, whether it's on the getting to the back. And then he's able to try to get the submissions from there. On the feet, I think, I don't know, Drickus is a big guy. Just a big guy. People don't realize when someone, when somebody hits you, bumps you, and they're a bigger guy, it throws everything that you're doing off. You go to yeah. throw a kick and he bumps you or pushes you, you fall over. Because the weight, <laughs> there's a big difference in the weight. There's a huge third. It makes a difference. Look, you know, I say it all the time. People, it's like. This is why I say heavyweights is, you know, it's kind of crazy that we have this giant weight gap. I go, because it doesn't matter. Yeah. Weight is weight, and it makes a difference. It does make a difference no matter what. It's it's harder for you to deal with. You know, it, it takes more energy to control it. It's not an easy thing. Bet US, America's favorite sports book and casino. Live betting and race book. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. Yeah. 
Very true. All right, I'm going to finish. We want to finish up on this a little bit of story because I know you have a story on this one. But look, this is um, not Paul Craig. Craig Jones. Paul Craig. Craig Jones talking about Sean Strickland talking about Tony Ferguson. <laughs> and I thought it was a cool little tidbit. Let me uh, go ahead and put it in. Sean starts talking to us about Tony Ferguson and he starts telling me, Volkanovsky, how insane a person Tony Ferguson is. He's like, yeah, I used to train with him. The guy's really crazy. He hears voices in his head. And me and Volks are like looking at him and then looking at each other. And we're like, how fucking insane does a human being need to be as Strickland's concerned yeah. about your mental health? That's the best <laughs> right there. <laughs> when Sean Strickland's concerned about this guy's <laughs> mental health, how when fucking Sean, insane is how, yeah. how insane is the person got to be for Sean Strickland to think that he's insane? <clears throat> well, well, John, uh, Tony dude, used to it. train at your gym. He did. And I've heard stories, not just at your gym, but I've heard stories about, you know, he, he's just a wild man when it came to training. He was. He was crazy. You know, it was. I actually, I refereed more matches in my gym with Tony Ferguson, you know, because people were pissed off at him and, and wanting to go after him, and he's going <clears> to <throat> jump right in. And It's not like he was backing down from anyone, but there, it got to a point where most of them said, I'm not training with him anymore. Mm. And it was because Tony, first off, he trained – his ass off. I'm not going to, I would never say anything more. He is an absolute animal when it comes to, he works out as hard as anyone you'll ever see, but he has no fucking, you know, everything is fifth gear. He has no ability to, to draw it back into first or second gear. You're, you're doing techniques or something and he's, he's going after it, you know, full speed. And, you know, and, and guys are going, dude, I'm giving it to you. Just, just cut it back a little bit. And Tony couldn't cut it back. And that was, you know, part of he's got that, you know, thing in his head. He, you know, he knows what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. And it doesn't matter who's telling him, hey, you need to slow it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's just not he he does not understand that language. You know, I used to, you know, I used to talk with his dad all the time. His dad's a super nice guy. And his dad, you know, was always concerned about, you know, first I was always concerned about, you know, is this a bad match for Tony and things like that. But it was like he was concerned about Tony burning himself out, burning himself up. And I said, I, I don't see him doing that. I said, because this is just the way he runs. This is, you know, this is his norm. It's not the norm for other people. And most people, it would burn out, but it's his norm. I think he did burn himself out though. And that's my thing. I don't, I, this is what I think you burn yourself out as you get older. And as he got yes. older, his body couldn't run. I agree with he you. thought, yeah. but John, you could see that he kept thinking, Oh, if I, if I train with David Goggins and I get pushed to the next level, it's going to make me yeah. a better fighter. No, it's no. not. You're already no. mentally tough. You, you, You're already you always need in to understand. shape. Well, you, you of all people, you know, did you train the same when you were 36 years of age? Than you did when you were 26 no those 10 years you got to learn hey i need to back off here if i don't back off i'm gonna break down and that's what happens as you get older well did, did, i disagree well yeah no i did train the same I'm not, when i was I'm, 26 I'm not and saying, 36 i'm not saying you didn't you didn't train hard but you trained smarter <clears throat> yeah you you did like okay instead of doing the the hard five rounds i did three that day you know, and okay. then, you know, and then, you know, Friday I, I did five instead because I, I needed more rest before the Friday hard sparring. Those type of things. Yeah. yeah. Make a little tiny adjustment. Also did a lot more food intake as I got older. Cause when I was younger, um, I just, I was depriving myself of water and, and food. I don't know what I was thinking or what I was doing, but it just, <clears throat> it, was, it was those coaches so we were talking about at the beginning Yeah, that water made you a sissy. Yeah. I just, for some <laughs> reason I was like, Oh no, the more I eat them, you know, the more weight I'm going to put on and it's going to make it harder weight for weight cuts. Yeah, it wasn't until I until Phil Baroni lived with me that I start realizing about diet and nutrition, man. That guy was like on a, a fucking bodybuilder diet, which kind of worked yeah. against him. That's because he didn't have the energy. Thing. Exactly. But it did it did make me feel it did give me the the look that I was looking for in terms of like, hey, I felt like I was Which itching. God we know was important to you. It was definitely like my hairline. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but um, but no, it it did. It made a difference. On I really did start feeling better as I started looking in better shape. And then as I started looking in better shape, and then I realized, okay, look, I can go ahead and eat a little bit more. I can go ahead. I always felt those first three weeks, four weeks, was all about getting my body to look physically good as well as start to feel like I could perform at an optimum level. 
if I wasn't, if I didn't start looking that part, I was like, man, dude, you're eating too much or you're eating shit. Like, what are you doing? You need to cut this out, cut that. I don't know. It was a mental thing for me. As soon as I started looking like I was in fight shape, then I started for some reason. Okay, good. A little bit more food, but still clean food, not shitty food. Just still more, now more food. Now I need to feed all these, these muscles because I didn't have muscles when I was fat. So I have to feed these things, right? And then I realized the more food I ate, the better my performances got. It was a weird, I worked backwards a lot of times in my career. I didn't have really a mentor to, to help me with diet and nutrition. I read a lot. I tried to figure it out myself, doing as much as I could. But I didn't have someone that really gave me the, the, the blueprint to, uh, you know, on diet and nutrition. If I did, it would have had to have been Phil Baroni because he was like, no, you're having four eggs in the morning with some soba noodles and, you know, some tur ground turkey, no salt, Mrs. Dash. You know, it was, it was a full, you know, it's asparagus, spinach, all this other stuff. Man, he was all about it, man. He was all about the nutrition when it came to like, hey, this is a clean, healthy diet. If you need to eat more, you can eat more because it's so clean. And he was right. But it just you needed, I needed more carbs to get my body going because I was burning the candle on both ends. All right. Well, hey, guys, that's going to wrap us up. Hope you guys enjoyed this show. We, we did stretch it pretty well, John. An hour and 10 minutes. We did a good job Damn. for such a shitty card. Um, good stuff. But guess Next what? Week, Next, Next week, though. Next week. That's a different card. Let's go. Let's go. So I'm excited yeah. for that card. Uh, I'm not excited about paying for it, but I am excited yeah. for it. <laughs> I am excited for it. Hey, we got, we got two pay-per-views in three weeks. I know. That's not a bad deal. No, not it is a bad deal. deal. It is because you got to pay for, for it. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, but hey, hopefully you guys enjoyed this show. I want to thank you guys so much for continuing to support us. Hit that subscribe button. Also, I haven't forgot about you members. I noticed we've got an eight or nine members there. I haven't forgot about you guys, but I do want to say this. I have a Nate Diaz sweater that I got from his Masvidal and his Diaz fight that was gifted to me from Tenori Clothing. Um, I've got that and I've got a shirt. I've got a, also a fan Mio shirt with the Nate Diaz, Nick Diaz, or Nate, Nate, Nate Diaz, Masvidal uh, face off on it. We will be giving that away. So I want to make sure you members are getting something. All right. So uh, we'll be doing, we'll be doing a contest. I got to come up with George. George and I got to brainstorm because I know John doesn't think about this type of stuff. So I got to brainstorm with, jo with George. About John's what, busy building his home. Yeah. What kind of competition <laughs> we can do for you guys. And uh, like I said, I got several articles. There's only eight or nine of you guys. But look, I want to make sure if you guys have it or you guys are not members yet, subscribe to us as a member. You guys will have an option. You guys have a, a chance, an opportunity to win the hoodie, the, the Tenori Nate Diaz hoodie. And also there's a shirt as well as the Fan Mio shirt. And I also got a Nate Diaz hat. So the Diaz, oh. the Diaz clan, I guess you could say the Diaz team, Team Diaz. I've got some articles for you guys to go ahead and take home. If you guys uh, are subscribers and members to our youtube channel so make sure you guys are members sign up hit that membership i want to thank you guys john take us away buddy for everyone out there i hope you enjoy your weekend have a great time be kind to someone do something good for somebody just because you can and we will see you